So, this is Upstage on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. The time is now 6.06. My colleague Sarah DeHay is off tonight. Sarah, I hope you're feeling better. We hope to see you again here next week. <laughs> so, coming up on the show, we're going to be speaking to uh, director Paulina Abarca Canton. She is directing the new show, The Refugee Hotel, presented by Tisri Dunia Theatre over at the Siegel Studio. The, the Tisri Dunia Theatre is dedicated to producing, developing, and presenting socially and politically relevant theater based on diverse cultures experiences it gives a vital voice to communities that might otherwise go unheard and share others histories but the show it is about the world's refugee crisis looms large affecting all walks of life generations and nations this moving dark comedy brings to life the consequences of exile betrayal torture and guilt um but is ultimately about the strength of the human spirit and its power to heal. Over the phone right now to tell us all about the show is Paulina Barca Canton. Hello, Paulina. How are you? Hello there. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Thank you so much for taking a few moments to speak to us about the show on this wet, rainy night. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, you are probably in now, right? Uh, we just finished an hour ago, uh, so all is well in the world. Excellent. I love hearing a director who is full of confidence like that. <laughs> So tell us about the show, The Refugee Hotel. It's tackling a lot of issues that are pretty pertinent to the world today. A lot of people are living this and it's being presented in this show. Could you tell us about it? Yes, and maybe to just uh, put in a comment in relation to what you said about a director being confident. A director is confident when you have a great script, which is certainly the case on this one, and yes. a great acting company, which is most definitely the case on this one, and you're working with a great creative team of designers, which is certainly my privilege to do so on mm -hmm. this show. Conversation mm -hmm. have, conversations have been rich and very, very interesting because, as you've mentioned, the state of the world and the state of refugees worldwide is an issue that uh, really merits uh, our attention at this point in time mm -hmm. as Canadians in particular. Mm -hmm. This would be a good time to present a show like this since it's a lot of talk, a lot of confusion out there at the moment regarding the refugee crisis that's happening internationally. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So mm -hmm. the show, just not to give you a false impression of what the show is about, the show um, has relevance to the current crisis, but the, the Refugee Hotel tells the story of the group of Chilean refugees who arrived in Canada following the first 9-11 in the world, the September 11, 1973, the Chilean coup d'etat that ousted uh, President Salvador Allende and, and thereafter which a military uh, dictatorship was established, a very cool one. And at that time, um, many people fled the country and many Chileans came, about 7,500 Chileans came to Canada to various cities across Canada. Mm -hmm. Canada was one of the countries that many of the Chileans had gone to. This is uh, one of the places that they, 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 they came to. They uh, came to, yes, but there's a catch to that they came to. Canada was one of the countries that accepted okay. Chileans fleeing the dictatorship. Sweden was the first country to accept Chilean dictatorship, uh, uh, sorry, to, to accept refugees fleeing the dictatorship. Mm -hmm. uh, for human rights abuses and so on. So Sweden was one of the first. And I take you back to 1973 and the Cold War, how polarized things were in the world. Canada did, Canada did not initially accept Chilean refugees because of its close relationship to the United States. Mm -hmm. And it was the triumph of citizen-led movements that turned Trudeau's, reversed Trudeau's decision in what later became a landmark refugee case within the context of Canadian immigration. Um, these were refugees that were fleeing a right-wing dictatorship, which mm -hmm. was exceptional in the world. And as I say, it was thanks to um, church groups and citizen movements that, uh, that lobbied very hard in Ottawa and across the country that the Canadian government then um, became extremely active and uh, offered refuge to over 7,000 Chileans. Mm -hmm. And the play itself, it does uh, the strength of the human spirit, like on these, on the people, not on the circumstance, but the people of what they went through. Is that correct? Would that be an yeah. accurate way to, to describe it? It would. And I should say that despite the, you know, the heaviness of what we've, just, we've been talking about, the play is actually a dark comedy. Okay. So the situation <laughs> is eight Chilean refugees who arrive at a downtown hotel 
in Montreal in 1974 and the three Canadians that they encounter. Mm -hmm. Of those eight Chileans, four form a family, Mm -hmm. and four of the characters come from different walks of life. Um, And and as in many um, cultural traditions, humor is what allows you to survive such difficult circumstances, and of course, love, tenderness, and the solidarity of your community. Mm -hmm. These are all things that you see very strongly in the play. I came to Canada when I was eight years old as one of those Chilean refugees, and um, it was there were very very difficult days, but the adults also were wonderful at making us laugh, at telling us that this was temporary, um, and and on the other and, uh, and at the same time we were so grateful to be in a country um, that offered so many opportunities and that was so physically beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned earlier that it was a, it's a very strong script that you've, uh, that's been handed to you. Um, wh- when you initially read it, um, did you automatically say, yes, this is a winner, this is something we could work with? Was that your initial uh, reaction to the play after reading it the first time? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because it's a beautifully written play. Um, no, in the sense that it took me a little while to... Um, return to that uh, part of my path as mm-hmm. an artist. Uh, and the play is written, I should say, by a fellow Chilean-Canadian who also obviously arrived in Canada when she was six years old, Carmen Aguirre. So she arrived with her family in Vancouver, and I arrived in Montreal with mine when I was eight. Mm-hmm. So there were a lot of similarities. There were a lot of um, differences. Um, and when you, when you go through a situation like that, I, as the character in the play explains it takes courage to remember and it takes courage to forget and Mm -hmm. it takes a true hero to do both Mm -hmm. so it's taken me a little while to become my own hero i suppose Mm -hmm. um and i think that for all of the actors that i'm fortunate enough to be working with there is for some similar journey at play Mm -hmm. of looking back at a at a past that to some extent one has repressed to move on, to assimilate, and to carry on within Canadian society. But given all that's happening in the world, it is really important to come out, as it were, and to tell one's own story um, as a means of paying it forward for others who are um, experiencing similar circumstances. And in a sense, um, I feel extremely strongly that the human spirit is incredibly resilient. So despite the concerns that we may have about our ability to integrate those refugees, I think we must really must not underestimate um, the human spirit and its uh, in its capacity to adapt, to transform, and to be resilient and to contribute to this new society that offers a new opportunity. If you're just tuning in now, we're speaking to Paulina Barca Canton. She is the director of the Refugee Hotel, the new show being presented by Tisri Dunia Theatre over at the Siegel Studio. It's running from October 26th to November 13th. Paulina, um, you said that there were a lot of similarities um, between you and the playwright of your exper- your life experiences. Um, also, you had a very strong design team, a really strong team around you. What kind of discussions came out of that once you, you went to the table reading? Um, to discuss this play? Um, I think perhaps just to differentiate between the design team that is in at the conceptual phase Mm -hmm. and then the acting ensemble who come Mm -hmm. in when a concept has already been offered and they render that concept, they bring life to that concept Mm -hmm. day by day and in their relationships. Um, So with the creative team, I think the most interesting and important journey that we have uh, transversed together is to recreate and to reconnect with Montreal in 1974. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trudeau, Bourassa, the PQ movement rising, um, a very uh, gay, vibrant and alive gay culture thriving in the city. Um, obviously, lots of tensions in the context of the Cold War. And these refugees, these Chileans, arrive at a hotel which no longer exists, called the Queen's Hotel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Usually, if you run into a Chilean of that generation in the city, most of them arrived at the Queen's Hotel and have very strong memories um, of that time at the Queen's Hotel. So we've essentially recreated much of the interior of that hotel and of that period, um, the fashion of the period and so on. And at the same time, digging deeper than um, that, um, we've done a lot of research into 
this is the context uh, from which the Chilean refugees are fleeing. In other words, concentration camps that the military dictatorship has set up across the country. Mm-hmm. So um, in, in terms of their costumes, the look, the mental state, because although the play takes place in the present, that is to say in 1973 when they arrive, um, there's a lot going on in their in their minds and their state of trauma as they are reliving experiences that they are, they have just fled from and are trying to stay present and move forward. Mm-hmm. And also regarding your cast, this is the biggest cast that Tisri Dunia Theatre has had in its entire history. There are 11 members in the cast, all coming from, from different cultures and different heritages. What's it like to be uh, working on a show like that, the first one in Tisri Dunia's history? Um, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And the company itself has done wonderful work for many, many years. And I've uh, had the pleasure of working with the company um, on different shows over time. But what was interesting about this particular production was the challenge Challenge for us was to find um, Latin American uh, Canadian actors here in Montreal who, who spoke English because um, after the language policies changed in Quebec, most of the Latin American community speaks French. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have some crossover with other actors, so we had we had a doubt as to whether we would be able to find uh, the cast, and we were I was absolutely blown away. We saw some um, yes, we definitely have the talent, and I'm very fortunate to be working with some of the best actors from the Latin American Canadian community as well as from other um, cultural backgrounds like Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And also the performances, they are done in English with Spanish surtitles. This was a decision of the, uh, that that you've decided to do to, uh, for the presentation. Yes. I'm so glad you picked that up. So the play is performed in English. um, And one of the amazing things about working at the Siegel Center for performing arts and the work that the Yiddish theater has been doing there for many, many years, the theater, part of the theater that I grew up with admiring, um, is working with subtitles. So they perform plays in Yiddish with English and French language subtitles, um, which is a wonderful way to bring a new community into, into that theater. And I, and I, and I really wanted to do that for, uh, for the community that the play speaks to, or rather whose life this play reflects. It speaks to many different communities, but I really wanted to be able to have um, Spanish language speakers be able to attend and and understand the show. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have. We are fortunate that Bruce Gibbons fell, had just finished the Spanish language uh, translation. Uh, He had been working with a company in Toronto, and he was delighted when I asked and uh, that is what you will see, uh, Spanish language subtitles by Bruce Gibbons fell and the original play written by Carmen Aguirre in English. Mm-hmm. And one of the mandates of Tisri Dunia is to encourage dialogue uh, with their audience members and their artists to, to get a discussion going. What a great play for, the, for yes. <laughs> to do that with, right? I mean, there's yes. so much material here, yes. so much thought, so many opinions. It'll, it'll spark so many discussions. That's something you're excited about, the talkback sessions. I'm extremely excited about those sessions, and I have already, because over the past year, I've been in discussion uh, with several um, researchers, people who work with um, uh, people who work with trauma victims, and so on. Um, one of the things that they're very excited about is the opportunity to speak about their their research to the audience, but in a context that renders that research human. Mm-hmm. It, it, it renders the whole experience human, and this is the wonderful challenge that we have as actors, director, and creative team, is that it has to captivate, connect, um, and, and render it, and, t- and, and take you on the journey, take you yourself on the journey. So the talkbacks are an opportunity to have some people who have seen various waves of refugees over the years now, the Chilean crisis was 40 and 40 something years ago. But since then, as you know, we have had people from El Salvador, Vietnam, Uganda, Colombia, the list goes on up until the present experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some, pa- there are definitely patterns and there are definite coping strategies. And I think Canada has learned a lot about how to help people recover and how to help people heal and move on. Is there something so that... Yeah, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. 
that's part of the discussion that we will have after the show. And the, there are uh, different speakers speaking to immigration, changing the evolution of Canada's refugee immigration policy, health issues. One of the nights, playwright Carmen Aguirre flying in from Vancouver to talk to the audience about her process, what inspired her to create the play and to have a talk with the audience. Uh, the actors will be on stage many nights as well, having a conversation with the audience uh, to get their feedback and their response to what they had seen on stage. Mm. I'm really excited about the talkbacks. <laughs> they they, the they are a lot of fun. <laughs> It's not the kind of play that you could say to an audience, thank you, lights up, go home now. It's a play mm-hmm. that says, let's talk about this now. Mm-hmm. Is there something that you want them to walk away with after seeing the show and experiencing the talkbacks? Is there something that um, in particular you want to open your, your, your the eyes of your audience to? Um, I think it's everything I've just said, but mm-hmm. um, I think it's true to in our audience for the fact that People are destitute and displaced, as you and I are having this conversation, Mm -hmm. that there are people in hotels across the country right now Mm -hmm. that are um, undergoing a similar process, and that we as Canadians have a real possibility to assist, um, to transform those lives, to transform the world, and to make it a better place. If you're just tuning in now, we're speaking to Paulina Abarca-Canton. She's directing The Refugee Hotel, the new show by Tisri Dunia Theatre. It's being presented at the Siegel Centre Studio from October 26th to November 13th. For tickets, you could contact the box office at 514-739-7944. The Siegel Centre Studio address is 5170 Côte St. Catherine Road. Thank you so much, Paulina, for taking a moment to speak with us. Thank you for having me. It was a great pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. And break a leg with the show. Yay. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks. Take care.